Hi folks, in this video I'm going to show you how I built my electric tadpole trike with a leaning front suspension. I built the trike back in the summer of 2020, but I didn't explain anything in the original build video, so I thought I'd take the time to do that now while waiting for the last of the parts for the new street bike project to arrive. Unlike most of my projects, I decided to repurpose an old machine for this one. It was a Suzuki Quadrunner ATV that was collecting rust in the yard and missing just about everything except the front suspension. It seemed like a good candidate for a reverse trike conversion, so I hauled it into the workshop and started tearing it down. But after doing some research, I learned that I would need to rebuild the front end to give it a wider track in order to make it suitable enough for cornering at a reasonable speed. Around the same time, I had seen a YouTube video about a quad with leaning suspension built by a company in Arizona, I think. I don't know how to pronounce their name, so I'll just put it on the screen for you to read. Obviously, they inspired the decision to try to build a leaning suspension for the trike for better cornering stability, so that I wouldn't have to make the front track so wide that it would be hard to drive it on some of the local trails. I eventually came across another YouTube video by Metal Machine Shop, where he explains designing different leaning suspension geometries for his Velomobile project, and the pros and cons for each. This is how I decided on the geometry that I chose for the trike. I linked to his video in the description if you'd like to check it out. After finally deciding what I was going to do, I started modifying the front of the old frame. The biggest issue was having to reposition the main tubes as close together as possible so that they weren't in the way of the control arms when the trike leans. As they were in their stock positions, I would have only gotten a 15 to 20 degree lean angle. I wanted the trike to behave like a motorcycle, so I aimed to get at least a 30 degree lean angle. Once I got the main tubes repositioned and tack welded in place, I modified some old plastics from an LTR 450 ATV and set those in place to double check how everything was going to fit and work with the suspension. Then I started making and installing the mounting brackets for the control arms and reinstalled the old steering column. Its position is just as crucial as the suspension geometry because if the Ackerman steering geometry is off, nothing will work properly. By Ackerman geometry, I'm referring to the geometry of the steering components in relation to the rear wheel axle, specifically the steering arms that the tie rods attach to. They need to point directly at the center of the rear axle when the front wheels are straight in order to produce the desired effect, which is turning the inside wheel to a sharper angle than the outside wheel when taking a corner. Because the outside wheel is further away, it needs to follow a larger radius when going around a turn, so the angle of that wheel needs to automatically adjust accordingly as it's being turned, and Ackerman geometry is what achieves this. It actually took me a few attempts to get it right because I had so little space to work with in the frame now that the suspension is mounted to the center of the vehicle instead of the outside. There's a better suspension geometry that doesn't create this problem and actually provides more lean angle too, but it involves more moving parts and requires tools that I didn't have at the time. I then moved on to building the swing arm with 1x3 steel tubing and installed it so that I could base the steering components, aka the Ackerman geometry, on the rear axle location.
Once the swing arm was done, I moved on to making the control arms for the front suspension. I attached heim joints to the ends that connect to the frame using weld bungs, and the other ends will be connected to the steering knuckles using high misalignment ball joints. Because I wanted to use disc brakes instead of the original drum brakes, I chose to use the steering knuckles and wheels from an old Raptor ATV. This is one of the factors that led to only getting a 30 degree lean angle, because the high misalignment ball joints will only allow so much travel. Ideally, I would have made my own hubs and steering knuckles, and used heim joints to connect the control arms to the them so that I could lean the trike as much as I wanted, but again, this required tools that I didn't have, specifically a lathe. But now that I have one, we'll be revisiting this project with improvements after the current bike builds are finished. After all the metal fabrication was done, I cleaned up the parts, gave them a coat of primer and paint, then started the final assembly. The rear shock that I'm using came out of an old GSXR 750, along with the progressive dampening linkage, which in my opinion is a must for a heavy hub motor like the one that I'm using. Because there's so much more weight than normal in the rear wheel, the spring needs to be stiffer, but if there isn't enough sprung weight to counter it, then the bumps in the road become a lot harder. The PDS linkage will help to smooth out the small bumps at least. The front suspension is also set up to receive just one shock too, shared between both wheels. This is one of the more cost efficient geometries for leaning suspension, but it has drawbacks too, like transferring load from one wheel hitting a pothole directly to the other wheel instead of into the chassis, for example. This does cause an occasional wobble and affects handling to a degree, but it's not enough to be concerned about. It's not as bad as a death wobble on a motorcycle, or a tank slapper as they're called, and it could be easily fixed with a steering stabilizer. But as I mentioned earlier, we'll be revisiting this project with some upgrades in the future, and adding another shock will be one of them. Aside from the Ackerman geometry, one of the most important factors involved in getting a leaning suspension to work properly is making sure that the control arms and tie rods form a parallelogram when you look at them from the front. In other words, they're all perfectly parallel with each other and the pivot points all line up properly to produce consistent lean angles at the wheels. If the suspension doesn't line up or the Ackerman geometry is off, then the lean angles at the wheels won't be consistent, the steering won't work properly, and the resulting tire scrub will wear the tires out prematurely. After the suspension was installed and I verified everything would work, it was time to install the powertrain. The hub motor that you saw earlier is QS Motors QS27370H version 3, which is the 12 kilowatt continuous, 28 kilowatt peak model. It'll be controlled by a KLS72601 8080H speed controller from Kelly Controls. It's fully programmable and has regenerative braking and deceleration. Kelly controllers need to do what's called an angle identification operation to sync the controller with the motor before they can be used together, along with setting basic parameters like low and high voltage protection, current, and RPM. I won't go into detail about programming it here, but if you're interested in learning how, then I explain it all in my buggy wiring video, which I link to in the video description, along with links for the powertrain components. The battery that I used is a 72 volt, 60 amp hour pack built with LiPo pouch cells. It was custom built specifically for this trike by Gripow and provided for promotional purposes in the original video. Gripow is a leading manufacturer of lithium cells and lithium batteries. Unfortunately, they don't sell directly to the general public, but if you need a bulk order of custom batteries for a product that you're developing, then they're the folks to call. After testing, this battery provided me with up to 100 kilometers of range for trail riding at around 40 to 50 kilometers an hour average speed and roughly 80 kilometers of range on the asphalt at 70 to 80 kilometers an hour.
The trike as a whole turned out pretty good. I got a top speed of around 110 kilometers an hour, but that's at 72 volts. More voltage equals more speed, and with the motor being rated for up to 96 volts, it could easily reach up to 150 kilometers an hour, which is on par with most motorcycles in the same power class. For one of my first EV builds, I was pretty happy with it. It's loads of fun to drive, almost like a motorcycle. I say almost because of that 30 degree lean angle limit. It wasn't a major hindrance, but I did notice that I had to slow down just a bit more for the tight corners than what I would have for a motorcycle. I'm going to change things up in the future so I can get 40 or 45 degrees out of it and add another shock in the front for a true independent leaning suspension. That's it for now, folks. If there are any other old videos that you'd like me to add narration to, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and take care.